In this video, I want to show you how you can save class membership probabilities in a latent class analysis in M+. Here I have a three class model for five items that measure computer game preference and I want to save class membership statistics for this three class solution, meaning I want to see for each individual how likely is it that each person belongs to each of the three latent classes and what is the most likely class membership for each person. So how do I do that in M+, you can see that for the latent class analysis I defined my indicators as categorical, so those are binary items in this case, so we have a classical latent class analysis. I specified that I want to extract a latent class variable L with three categories, so this means it's a three class solution and I chose type equals mixture. So M plus then knows that this is a class classical latent class analysis with categorical items. And so how do I get the class membership statistics in M plus? I get those by adding the save data command here at the bottom. With the save data command, I can first of all specify an external file that I want to save the class membership statistics to. So I want to add this to my data file. And so the name of this new data file that M plus will generate and that M plus will add those class membership statistics to is called computer games three classes dot dot and then the save subcommand tells M plus what we want to save what kinds of estimates and so then the relevant keyword here is C probabilities for the class probabilities and so those will be added as new variables to this data set. Now one thing that's also good to know is that M plus by default when you run a latent class analysis and you save class membership statistics will only add the items that you're using in the analysis to this file and the class membership statistics. M plus will not add any other variables that you might want to keep in this data set or add to this new data set. And so if you have other variables that you want to be retained in this data set that you're not using in your latent class model but that are in your data set and you want to keep them then you have to use the auxiliary command here where you can list other variables that you want to be included in this new data file so age and gender in this case are not used in the latent class model itself but we want to retain them in this new file that has the class membership statistics and so we list them under auxiliary in the variable command and then M plus will include those into this save data new file now let's take a look at what M plus gives us when we run this analysis. And I'm not going to go through all the output, but I want to show you that at the very end, M plus um, provides you with information on what is saved in which order in this new data file. So you have to scroll all the way down. And then at the very end where it says save data information, you can see that the new file that has been created by M plus is the file computer games three classes dot dot the old file will not be changed so your analysis file will be will remain the same this is a new file that M plus generated and saved into the same directory where you have your input or syntax file and so now M plus tells you what is in this file and in which order and format so in this case M plus used the five items from the latent class analysis or added those items first to this data file and then the auxiliary variables age and gender that were not used in the model but that we asked M plus to save as well into this new file and then last are the three class probability variables for each of the three latent classes we get a variable that gives the probability for each individual of belonging to that class. And then finally, M plus also created a new variable L that is the most likely class membership. And we'll see exactly how that works when we take a look at this new file that M plus here generated. So this is useful information for you to know what's in this new file and in which order when you want to, for example, read this data set into another program to run further analyses with those new variables either in M plus or in a different program then you know what you have in this data set. So let's take a look at 
um, this file. And for example, here in Mac, you can open this with a text edit program. In Windows, you could open it with Notepad. It's a simple text file, a dat file. And you can see that we have the first five columns here, we have our binary items, and then the next column is age, and then gender, and then we have the three class probability variables, and lastly we have the manifest class membership that was estimated by M plus based on the most likely latent class membership. Now, how does this work? You can see, for example, the first individual in this data set had the highest probability for class one, 0 0.701. So that individual therefore was classified by M plus into class one or assigned to class one because that was the highest probability. The second individual, um, also had the highest probability for class one and it was higher, 0.976. So the certainty with which that uh, second individual was classified into class one was higher. There was a higher reliability or that individual's response pattern was more clear cut, was more in line with the prototypical pattern in class one. For, cla for individual one, there was more uncertainty. There was also a, a relatively high chance that this individual could have been in class three. So this shows you that this manifest class assignment here is actually um, error prone. So even though those two individuals are both classified into class one, they don't have the same probability of belonging to class one, or there's not the same certainty for those individuals. And therefore, when you use class membership statistics, you have to be careful because that manifest class assignment, so say reintroduces measurement error, because not everybody is um, assigned with very high certainty to um, his or her most likely class. There are individual differences in class assignment probabilities, as you can see here. For some individuals, the classification is very good. Like, for example, these individuals here have a very high chance of being in class one, and so there's very little error involved. But for other individuals, there's a lot more error. And let me see if I can find one here where it's not looking so good. So for example, here, this individual has only a 66.6% .6 or two thirds um, chance of being in class two and a chance of one third of being in class three. So there's a high likelihood of an error for classification error there. And there are other individuals as well where those probabilities are not so clear cut. Therefore, when you use covariates to predict class membership, it's usually best to add those covariates directly to your latent class model and not work with these class membership statistics and relate those to covariates that might reintroduce some error. Nonetheless, these class membership statistics, of course, are very useful because they allow you to say something about individual response patterns and the reliability with which individuals can be classified based on their response patterns. So it provides very useful information for individual diagnostic purposes when you use latent class analysis to classify individuals. You can also use these statistics to classify new individuals when you have new people and you want to know which class do they belong to and they weren't included in the analysis, then you can look at their response pattern and you can see if there's um, the same response pattern here already. And then you can find out how likely they would be assigned to class one, two or three based on this existing solution. So that can be helpful when you later on test more people or um, examine more people and then you can find out which class would they likely be in. I hope you found this class or this short uh, presentation useful. If you're interested in more um, about latent class analysis, I offer a longer workshop on latent class analysis that you find in the description for this video. Also, please subscribe to this channel and leave a comment in the comment section in case you have other topics that you would like to see discussed. And I'll see you next time.